This app made $38 million last month and is valued at $14 billion. In this video, I'm going to show you how to rebuild this app Duolingo all with AI. And we're going to be using Google AI Studio. I'm going to show you some tricks how to code, build and deploy your app all for free. All right. So let's jump in. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is open your browser and type Google AI Studio. And you want to click the first link on Google and it's going to bring you to the Google AI Studio. If you're not on this build page, then nothing to worry. You're probably going to see this at the home page and you want to click this build button over here, which is going to bring you into the build section of Google AI Studio. It's really cool. It's what we're used to. We have this prompt over here like ChatGPT or other services that you've used so if you've ever used a lovable for example or bolt or v0 in the past it's pretty much the same thing but the cool thing with google ai studio is that it's all free compared to the other services they're probably going to give you maybe a couple of credits a small trial but then you will have to pay to continue using it but google ai studio is free at least for now so if you're watching this and google ai studio is free right now then go use it because this is the best time to be creating apps online and especially with vibe coding and AI. So this is the prompt section over here where you could say, uh, I want to build a weather app. So a very simple app like this, you could build it. And if you click build, it would build the app for you. But the cool thing with Google AI studio is that they have this supercharge your apps with AI section. And you see all of these buttons over here where you could select a single one of them to add AI features in your apps. For example, you could have nano banana inside your application application and then as we clicked on it we can see this section over here that's above our prompt that's saying that now we have the ability to edit images with Gemini 2.5 and nano banana is super powerful let's say I take a selfie of myself and I say put a hat over my head then it's going to put a hat over your head as if you're using something powerful like Photoshop and then you have all these different AI capabilities you could have conversation with AI you could animate images with video you could have intelligence inside your app you could have a uh, video generation all generated with AI. You could have so many of these things. But one thing that a lot of developers and a lot of builders are struggling is that they always ask, what idea should I build? What kind of thing should I build? And the cool thing is that with Google AI Studio, they put this I'm feeling lucky button. So if you click on it, then it's going to use AI to create an idea for you. For example, here we have build an interactive map based chat boss that that uses real-time Google Maps data to answer location-specific questions. And as you can see, it selected two of the AI services over here, use Google search data and AI powered chatbot. So I'm assuming this, if we build it, it's going to be a chat-based app where you could talk with the AI and it's going to answer questions for you from the Google Maps data. But we don't want this. In this video, we are retrying to clone Duolingo. So let's write our prompt. We're going to say, build me a mobile application that is a clone of Duolingo. The user can select which language they want to learn. And then the app generates uh, lessons and challenges for the user to learn the new language step by step. Make sure that the lessons are all generated by AI. Make the app work nicely and it should look like Duolingo. Cool. So let's read the prompt again. We're saying build a mobile application that is a clone of Duolingo. The user can select which language they want to learn and then the app generates lessons and challenges for the user to learn the new language step by step. Make sure that the lessons are all generated by AI. Make the app work nicely and it should look like Duolingo. The model, we're going to have the latest model over here selected, Gemini 2.5. And there's one thing we want to select and let's select the fast AI responses because we said that we want the lessons to be generated by AI. Also, we could select this Gemini intelligence in your app so that our app has all the capabilities to generate lessons. And what we could also do is maybe generate images with a prompt. 
And over here, we could even expand our prompt. Each lesson should have an image associated with the question being asked so that the user knows where to select from the multiple answer. Cool. So the last section we added, each lesson should have an image associated with the question being asked so that the user knows what to select from the multiple answers. And just so that we know how Duolingo looks, let's write Duolingo on Google and let's look at the app, Duolingo app. Okay, Um. let's see. Okay, so this is how the, the Duolingo app looks. Let me just open this in a new tab. Let me expand this. Okay, so this is the familiar Duolingo UX that we're all used to seeing. The first page that we see is where you select your language and then we have all of our lessons and for each lesson you have a question and then multiple answers and this is a streak speech. Okay, let's see what this builds for us. Let's send it with build. Okay, it's probably going to take a little bit of time. Right now it's running. It's saying 10 seconds. It's thinking about our request. Let's see what it comes up with. All right, it thought for 37 seconds. Now it's actually creating the code. And if we look at the code section, everything is being generated on the fly. Okay, so we see that it's a React based app. Okay, cool. So it finished. It ran for 85 seconds, so a minute and 15 seconds. And we see something on our screen. So the app is called Lingua Genius. And the first screen, like we said, is a language selector. So in my case, I'm going to select uh, French because I know French. So I'll be able to tell if uh, the AI made some mistakes or not. So if I select French, okay, cool. So it look, it's looking like our dual link images over here so the first page was select your language and then you have the lessons selector so let's go back and then let's select uh, level one with basic and then it's generating the level one for French I'm assuming it's using AI to do all this hopefully something generates and it's not gonna error out okay cool so it looks like it finished oh this is pretty cool so it does have an image like we asked so let's read the question which one of these is the apple and then we have the answers in French and le livre means the book, la pomme means the apple, le chat means the cat, la maison means the house. So in our case, we're going to select la pomme. Let's see if it's good. Check. Okay, cool. Correct. Now let's select something that is wrong in this case to test this out. So which one of these is the book? And it's really cool because we're seeing the image generated by AI. And I'm assuming we used generates images with a prompt that is why each question has an image so which one is the book uh, le chien means le, uh, the dog la voiture means the, the car le livre means the book and la table means the table so and in, in this case it's uh, le livre but let's select la voiture which would be the car which would be wrong so if we select it let's see what happens okay so oh wow that's pretty cool so we got incorrect and also it's it's saying the correct answer Answer is le livre and it's also giving us a small explanation close remember le is used for masculine nouns like leave cool okay so we have a pretty pretty nice looking app that was built in one shot using google ai studio this is pretty cool i was expecting to go back and forth with the ai a little bit to fix this but it's looking like everything is working well so in this one let's just finish the lesson quickly the cat uh le chat correct the house let's go la maison all right, which the car, let's go la voiture, nice. Okay, so we finished basic one. Now let's go into basic two. And now it's generating level two for French, creating lesson images. And again, it's using the generate images with a prompt feature that we selected to generate the images. Cool, so which one of these is the dog, le chien? All right, cool. So it looks like everything is working. Le livre, all right, um, with the water, all right. Lo, la maison, the bread. Um, let's go with the pen. Okay, so cool. Everything is looking super well. So we just completed basic one and basic two. And if you want more levels, then you could prompt with the AI and just tell it to 
generate more levels and more lessons for you. But for now, I'm pretty satisfied with this app. And if we look at Duolingo, this app is worth millions and millions of dollars. And it's crazy how we create this all in one prompt using Google AI Studio. And to be honest, I've done this before this video just as a test and I had to go maybe back and forth with the AI a little bit. But this time, I don't know if I got lucky, but everything is working well on the first shot. So for you, it might depend. Maybe you'll have to go back and forth and tell the AI, hey, maybe this thing is not working and maybe you missed this thing and that thing. Or maybe you could have everything working in one shot. Cool, so this is our application, but how do you actually share it or, and publish it online so that other people can use it? So we have this deploy app button over here. So if we click on it, it's saying select a cloud project um, and you could just create a new project, um, test YouTube, you could name it whatever you want. So create a new project. Okay, cool. So now it's saying select a Google project to proceed. Now we're gonna select test YouTube. Oh, but it's saying you have to set up billing, which this is the thing about what I don't like about Google AI Studio right now, because if you select on it, then you actually have to go inside and put in your credit card. Um, yeah, so you have to link a billing account. You could do that, or I'm going to show you a better way to do this entire thing. So you could click this save to GitHub button over here and make sure to sign in. I've already signed in. So if you don't have a GitHub account, just go on github.com and then uh, create an account. It's very easy and simple to do. And over here, it's saying fill out the information below to create your repo and make your first commit. Okay, cool. So over here, we're going to write, uh, for example, duo lingo clone. And then at the repository description, we could just write, I don't know, clone of duo lingo. It could be anything. And over here, your repo could be private or public. So essentially what this is doing, it's taking this code that um, Google AI Studio generated and it's going to push it into GitHub where it's going to save the version of your code. So this is not going to publish your website right now. This is just saving your code somewhere so that you don't lose it. And we need to do this step because we need our code to live into GitHub first and then we can take it from GitHub and then deploy it to the internet. So in my case, I'm going to make this public and then uh, click this button, create repo. Okay, it's syncing your changes, fail to create repository, the GitHub repository already exists. Okay, I see, so I think I have this name already. So let's put a two over here and then click create GitHub repo. All right, now it looks like it's doing something, loading file differences. All right, so now the last thing you wanna do is just click this stage and commit all changes. Okay, no changes to commit. Now let's go into GitHub and and make sure that we have our project inside our profile. So if you click your profile and what I like to do to make sure that I have my latest changes and you look at this Git contribution section over here and you look at your green dots over here and you want to find the latest day. So uh, make sure that it is the latest day. Yesterday was October 29th and today is October 30th. So you want to make sure to click on the latest day if you click on it and then it's going to show you the contribution activity. So essentially the history of what you've done so as we can see duolingo clone 2 has been committed and if we click on it then we could actually see all the code that is saved on github so this is pretty cool you could always take this code save it from one computer to the other and this code is always going to be on your github and it's never going to be deleted so what we can do is now go into vercel Com. Now, if you go into Vercel.com, if you don't have an account, just sign up. And um, the best thing I would recommend is to continue with GitHub because we just create a GitHub. So if you continue with GitHub, everything will be linked nicely for you. So make sure to continue with GitHub. And then after you sign in, then you should see a dashboard like this where you should see a lot of text. But what you should be focusing on is this add new button over here. If you click on it, then you want to click new project. So add new project. And because you signed in with GitHub, then you'll be able to see all of your projects over here.
here listed from your GitHub account. And if you did not sign up with GitHub, then no worry, you should have a button over here to link your GitHub. Then what you want to do is find the project that you just pushed into GitHub and click the import button. If you click the import button, then over here, it's going to set up all the configurations for you. And um, what you want to do is click this deploy button over here. But before we do that, we want to set up the environment variable, because if we look at our GitHub, when we pushed it, it's saying the prerequisites is Node.js. Well, obviously our project is running on Vit, so we're cool on that. Vit is a Node.js framework as saying uh, you'll have to do npm install. No worries about that. Vercel is going to do it. But the important thing is over here, the Gemini API key needs to be set. So let's copy this. And then in the environment variable section, let's add this over here. Now, where do you find the value for your environment variable, the Gemini API key? Essentially, this Gemini API key is the key that lets you use all of the AI features from Gemini because you need to call these Gemini services like creating all of the lessons for you from AI, generating all of these images for you for your lessons. And to call these APIs, you need a secret key. And the reason why it's secret is because you don't want other people to use your key so that in the end, someone just calls so many services from Gemini and then just locks in your account. Or even if you have a billing setup in your Gemini account, then you could even have uh, your account built. So the reason why it's secret is um, because of that, because we want to protect our Gemini API calls. So what you want to do is go back into your Google AI Studio tab, click X over here, and then click this button over here back to start. And then go back again one more time. So click the build build button over here with the arrow and then you're going to come back into the home page for Google AI Studio and you want to click the get API key. If you click this button over here, as you can see, I have some Google API keys for different projects and you want to click this create API key button over here and then name your API key. You could write a uh, Duolingo clone and then select a cloud project. And if you don't have a project, you could just create one. But in my case, I created one in the video. So test YouTube and then just click this create key button. And we have a new key created for the test YouTube project. And we could select the key and make sure to click this button to copy it. And then you want to go back into Vercel and then paste in your API key. And this is a very important step because if you don't do this step, your project is not going to work. I've done it without doing this and it did not work. And I was really confused why. And I was looking at the logs and everything. And um, I tried a bunch of things until I went and looked at my GitHub description. And it said that I need the JB9 API key, which makes a lot of sense. And then after you have your API key, you want to click this deploy button. Now it's deploying, it's going to do all the things that are needed for your application, like doing npm install and installing all the packages, the configurations. You don't have to worry about that. You could look at the logs if you want to. It's probably going to take a couple of seconds and it's finished. Cool. All right. So we have our app live. It's saying, congratulations, you just deployed a new project. Over here, we could click this thumbnail over here that will bring us into the website, or we could continue to dashboard. But in our case, we want to see our application. If we click on it, nice. We see our application live on the internet. So like we've tested on the Google AI Studio website, everything should be working as intended. So in our case, let's select Japanese. I don't know anything about Japanese. So let's test that out. Basic one. So it's generating level one for Japanese. And we could actually see that it's doing some networking calls. Yep, it did some networking calls to generate all the images and the lessons for the Japanese language that we selected with AI. Okay, cool. So it finished generating the first lesson for Japanese. Now it's saying which one of these is Apple. Okay, so I see that the image over here is probably not the best, but I don't know any Japanese. So to me, this all of them look good and not good because I don't know the language. So let's select, I don't know, this one, check. Okay, cool. So that's not good. It's saying that this, the one I selected, it means tangerine, while the other one, 
which was on the right side, is saying the word for Japanese. Cool. Um, yeah, so I don't know anything about these. So let's select something else. Okay, cool. So this was a quick video showcasing Google AI Studio. I hope you learned something. I hope you're eager to go and try out Google AI Studio. I'm not sponsored or anything by Google AI Studio. I just found the entire experience super cool and it's free. So you have nothing to lose. And I showed you the entire process from using Google AI Studio to pushing your code to GitHub and then using that code to deploy your app to Vercel. And now you have your application living on the web where you could share it to anyone you like and even build on top of it and even try to monetize it in the end. But this was just a simple example. Take it from here and go to the moon. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.